Hoki nixu quex nitaniku ku ki. Itai a pit since gasim Kevin a ki sui kaxim nom tu tu am scapi pikani nitsitu pi itunio. Uh, hello, my relatives. My name is Kevin Kicking Woman. My Indian name is Kuki Corner Post. I come from the Umskapi Pikani people, and I re- currently reside in Browning and work at Browning High School teaching Blackfeet history and Blackfeet language, 9 through 12. I can't really remember when I first start singing because I've been a singer all my life. Um, you know, I, I, as far as I can remember going back to probably about four or five years old, um, perhaps more later than earlier than that, but I've always sang all my life and what got me into singing is, um, you know, uh, when you grew up foster homes, it was a pastime for me because I wasn't allowed to go do certain things and so on and even go outside and visit or whatnot. And eventually I uh, sit there and sing songs. And whatever songs they were, so I didn't even know, sometimes I would just sing and, and put, make up my own songs because it would get me through the day, through the abuse and whatnot. And so songs saved me. Songs were my comfort and so on. So that's why um, I love to sing today. I, I think that songs are probably the most powerful thing we have as Native people. When you put songs in perspective, and I, I wrote my thesis on Blackfoot songs through ceremony and so what I really look at is the primary s- songs are time and place then we have our secondary songs that can be sung pretty much anywhere and so on so again like your Sundance primary uh, they happen a certain time those songs are sung some people have winter songs and we have a song for everything so our Okan songs are sung at a certain time meaning the medicine lodge uh, holy, our holy smokes, our Nanamskaks when the first sound of thunder. And so those songs are sung at a certain time. And these other songs, um, I can show you kind of a, a different variation. This is kind of a, what they call a horse nation song. And this song is, can be used as a, uh, praise song. Uh, one of the highest honors you can sing for someone. And, and that's kind of one of those secondary songs you can sing anywhere. And you don't need, um, you just stand up and sing anywhere you want to. If you want to honor someone, you just stand up and sing. So this is that Horse Nation song. And the second song that I'll share with you <coughs> is when, and I talked about this with education. You know, we do our Okans, and some people call them Sundance, we call them Medicine Lodge. And that center pole is the center of who we are as people. And so when I think about education, and I talked about this, how education, um, that center pole is education. And so everybody comes together, whether you're teacher, student, uh, academics, curriculum, whatever, that center pole's the one that keeps this education together. And so there's a center pole song that when the Sundance comes, all people from different tribes start coming when that center pole's going up, and they're all singing this song, and it's called Coming Together. And this is a song I'll show you. <coughs> Ha 
And so when you put songs in a perspective, I look at it in this way. When we think about spirit, a lot of people say energy, we call it spirit. And so we can't do anything in our cer- without ha- our songs to have ceremony. And so that's why they're so powerful because they bring things to life. And say, for instance, if you went and grabbed something out of a sacred item, out of a, uh, a bundle, I guess to say, and that human being grabs that item, he brought it to life because of the songs that's being sung that belongs to that. And so that reciprocation of energy and spirit, that's what that's all about. And so nothing in the black in, in the black ways of knowing is all it's all animate. Everything's alive. And so with that song, the language, the people, the prayer, it's what that songs are about, the reciprocation of energy. So that's why Hachimoi we pray so those we can heal people. The um there's a lot of pause. Here's a round dance. This song goes back to the 50s, and I sure like this round dance. And of course, we know round dances are um, love songs and uh, perhaps courting songs. And so this is an old place called Star School. is a place I grew up in. The song was way back then, and, and uh, they would have these social dances and women's choice, men's choice, the, the announcer, whatever they said. And they sing on one big drum. Everybody came. You know, now everybody has their own drum, but they used to come and sing on one big drum. And this is one of the songs. It's a round dance. Old song. I this song um, is probably a secondary, and this is a what called a rough rider song, Yoch uh, and this rough rider was a song from societies that come at home. All these societies, we have so many societies, and I know every song to these societies, and there's got to be 50, 60 or societies at home, and they're family songs, and so someone's doing good, or crossing over, or um, these are what we honor them with. And this is my dad and my grandpa and them had this song, and I'm part of the Ochketupis, uh Rough Riders, and this is their song. So that's the, and there's like, and I'll sing a sweat song for you. There's a sweat song, and I got a, there's a whole bunch of them, and uh, this sweat song comes from up Cree country, you know, and uh, I'll sing that one for you. And they're used in sweats and so on, and those are kind of those um, place and time, but they can happen anywhere, right? You know, and they, they just don't happen on the reservation. A lot of our ceremonies are stuck, they're on that reservation because that's where the, we're tied to, right? But these sweats, they can have Missoula, Helena, wherever you're at, and then they have these sweats. And so these are some of the songs you, we sing. Yeah. <laughs> 
So that's a sweat song, so. One, humble yourself. I think that as a singer, um, humility is big. And what I mean by that is because you're going to be asked for help. And as a singer, you got, I really find singers very intelligent because there's not a lot of people that can um, call upon a recorder. We just know. And the songs are filed in your head somehow when you call upon them. And so when you humble yourself to that, because you know people are going to call on you to help them. And we talked about that spirit to bringing things to life. And I always say, when you're going to sing a song and you're young, sing it right. Sing it the way it was intended. Sing the way it sounded 100 years, 200 years ago. It should sound the same today. And so that's what I tell young people. Humble yourself because you're going to help people, and they're, whether it's in good or bad times. And the power those songs bring for healing, they, I don't take lightly. So humble yourself and always learn. You're only good and no one's watching. And so that's what I do when I get asked for sing for certain things. When no one's watching is when I'm practicing. And so my thing is humble yourself to the game. Um, I don't want to say game. Humble yourself to what you're doing. Um, remember, songs are powerful. And make sure you use them in the right way. And so and I think you'll be blessed. You really will be blessed because you're a song keeper. And so... <laughs>